Hi scrubs, I hope you're well. So this video is made in collaboration with Z Red Dragon. Please check out the video description where I have linked both their Twitch and their YouTube because they have been so helpful in helping me create this video today. So I'm going to be talking about breeding horses in Alicia Online. The things that I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover the basics of breeding horses in Alicia Online. I'm going to talk about skills of horses, potentials, as well as the total skills, the limitations to breeding, and also um, the things you should do before you breed horses in order to ensure you get the horses that you want. So to start off with, you have to be at least player level 10 in order to breed horses in Alicia Online. The next thing is that you must have a free horse slot available before you can breed anything. And if you don't have one available, you can go into the shop, click on items, miscellaneous, and scroll down to the additional horse slots where you can purchase them for 10,000 gems. All horses on Alicia Online have five skills. These include agility, control, speed, strength, and spirit. Agility is used to increase dash speed, increases sliding ability, and decrease speed loss while sliding, making it really good for making sharp sliding turns in races. Um, in magic races, it can increase shield duration, and every 10 points increases the shield's critical chance. Then we have control. This is most used in magic because it helps increase how fast the magic bar fills. But it also can decrease speed loss while running uphill, decreases collision shocks, and increases downhill running speed. Then we have speed. This increases the boost speed of the horse, and in magic races it increases the duration of boosts, uh, it increases the duration of team magic spellbook, and every 10 points increases the critical chance of boost and spellbook in magic races. Then we have strength. This increases the duration of boosts, and it increases the duration of Phoenix Feather in Magic Races, and every 10 points increases the critical chance of Phoenix Feather. Then we have Spirit. Spirit increases the speed of chasing with a feather um, in the speed races, and uh, longer boost time of chasing for feathers, and uh, larger obtainable range of feathers, and feathers are obtainable for longer, and its magic effects include the decrease of time you remain shocked in ice, and every 10 points increases the critical chance of ice. So those are all the skills of the horses. It's very important to figure out what skills you want to focus on with your horses and consider how you play Alicia online, whether you're a magic racer or a speed racer or if you do both. Now there is a bit of debate here and I'm not going to tell you how to play the game, okay? You need to figure this out for yourself, but what I am going to say is you can go into magic with a purely control horse, okay? You can go into speed races with a pure speed horse, okay? Therefore you focus all of the um, points of your horse into control for magic and speed for speed. However, there is some benefit in sometimes having split stats, but you can make this decision for yourself and I'm not going to tell you that you have to do this. Uh, some people like to have magic uh, horses that are good in control and speed, therefore they're split statted. Uh, this is an example of one that is split statted in control and speed. I like having some horses like this. I do have some horses that aren't split statted, but sometimes I find there's a little bit of benefit in having a split statted horse in some races. In terms of speed races, most people seem to like to have a, either a speed horse or they like to have a speed and strength horse. Therefore, um, half of the points go into speed and half go into strength. Um, this is going to be left totally up to you guys as to what you want to focus on. If you're not sure on what to focus on, then considering trying out the free rental horses. Now, if you go into bonuses and then click horse rental, uh, there is always every hour you're able to choose a new horse. All four rental horses will change every hour and the rented horse will be replaced with the horse you're currently riding. The original horse will continue to gain experience while you're using a rented horse. The great thing about rental horses is they can have very varied skills. Here we've got one that's purely control horse. All of the points go into control. Here we've got a split statted horse that's half uh, strength and half spirit. Um, we've got some other ones there that are just kind of equal in all stats. Personally, I wouldn't advise the ki these kinds of horses. Um, I would prefer something that's split statted or either one that's uh, purely focused in one. But consider trying out the rental horses because you might actually find, because they change every hour, you have a chance of getting different horses with different skill sets and you might actually find that you find the horse that's just right for you. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is potentials in Alicia Online. Whenever you breed horses, sometimes your horses will be born with a potential. Now there are all different kinds of potentials. These include Gifted Runner, Downhill Thrill, Iron Grip, Strong Heart, Magic Harvest, Resourceful, Perfectionist, Eagle Eye, Overprotective, Chain Master, Featherlight, Superior Start, Powerhouse and Bulldozer. So 
These different potentials all give different benefits. Now, unfortunately, I don't have all of them to show you, but I have two here on this account. And uh, this is Ghoul, and Ghoul has the Chain Master potential. So basically what this does is, in Magic Races, the shackles stay longer on other players' horses whenever I use that magic. Um, this potential has been maxed out, and I'll get into that in just a moment. So this is Pot Pie. Pot Pie has gifted Runner, and uh, the base speed is increased until you reach first place. So basically, until my horse is in first place, my horse will get faster. Um, that's what that bonus does. Now, each of these different potentials will give you uh, different boosts or bonuses in terms of what they do. Some of them will be better for magic, some of them will be better for speed, and vice versa. Now I have two horses here that have maxed potentials. Now what that means is nothing I do in races is going to increase the potentials further. Now when you race your horses, if your horse has a potential, your horse will gain some potential points with each race that it does, so long as you finish the race. Now as your horse's potential goes up, eventually you will do a race and it doesn't gain anything. This means that your horse has maxed and when you go to visit the horse it will show max beside the potential. So your horse is not necessarily going to reach a hundred out of a hundred. It's going to hit a point where it no longer increases. Now just in relation to potentials, this was a post from Alicia online in September 2017 and at the bottom here they mention that a uh, foal can get potential, which is an additional skill. The chance of getting potential is higher if the parents also have potential. So what this means is that if you're trying to breed for potential horses, you, it's best that you breed a potential horse to a potential horse. Because if you breed a potential horse to a non-potential horse, you're lowering the chances that the foal is going to have a potential. Therefore, it's very important that you breed horses together that both have potentials to increase the chance of getting a higher potential on the foal. Now, it's still just a chance. You could still end up with one that's slightly lower, but it shows just how important it is to pick parents that both have no potentials. Now, this runs a risk because presently there's no way to search for horses that genuinely have potential in the breeding registrations because at the moment people tend to name their horses potentials like for example somebody might name one gifted runner or perfectionist and you think oh that horse has potential a lot of people even name some of the horses potential and the problem with this is a lot of people are labeling horses these names because they know people are going to breed with them but the horses don't actually have potential because there's no way to check so what you need to do if you're considering breeding for potential then use special forums to ensure the horses have potential this helps you avoid scammers and a lot of players name horses you know as i just said after potentials um, even though the horse hasn't got any. So consider using outside special forums. Z Red Dragon has a link to one of these special forums on their Twitch page so do check that out in the description. So this is a place where people post genuine horses that actually have potential. Obviously if somebody's hiding something or the picture that they've sent looks like it might have been edited then don't bring to the horse. Don't risk wasting, wasting your cards on a horse that doesn't actually have any potential. Consider working alongside a friend or a partner or even creating a second account whenever you're trying to do potential breeding to ensure that you're actually breeding with the horses with potential if you don't want to use any special forums outside of the game or it just might be easier to work with a partner who is also working on the same uh, kind of thing as you, it has the same goals and uh, this can make it easier to reach what you want with your potential horses uh, rather than just doing it on your own. This is a screenshot from Z Red Dragon of a horse they produced called Frostfire, which was a strong heart potential horse who reached 79 out of 100. Now, I'm going to have a look at the lineage of this horse. Um, it's just important to note that Leisha made some recent changes to potentials in their most recent update, and we are going to do an updated version of this in the near future, which hopefully will add a little bit more information to potentials. But we're going to look back at the history of the horses that they've been breeding in the past. So, um, with Frostfire, Frostfire um, comes from a long line of horses as you can see here. Now the first strong hard horse that they ever produced was a, a horse called Hope with 58 out of 100. This led on to Stardust who was a strong heart with 63 out of 100. Then we had Secret who was 82 out of 100. This went on to Deku which was 66 out of 100. Uh, then on to Yet of 68 out of 100. And then on to Frostfire of 79 out of 100. And this is the horse where the lineage will continue from. Now there are other 
other horses here that you can see where the lineage ended. They decided that these were not horses they wanted to continue working with um, out of the horses that they produced. So whenever you're working with potentials, it's important to decide which horses you're going to continue on with and which ones you're going to essentially get rid of because if you are breeding potentials and you find that the potentials are too low, then the horse may not be worth breeding and you're better working with the higher potential horses that you produce. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about the recent update that Alicia Online made to the game. So to start off with, Dear players, this week we mostly focused on improving the breeding system. First of all, the most important changes happened to potentials. Previously, it was impossible to achieve a high value of a fully uh, leveled up potential. Now potentials should increase properly, similar to the original version of the game. Moreover, the value of potential can now be properly inherited. Specifically, a foal will have a much higher chance to achieve a high value of potential if its parents or grandparents had high values of potential. Another improvement today is that you will now be able to use the breeding system uh, while being on any ranch, for example on your friends or a public ranch, so whenever you feel like breeding you will no longer have to move back to your own ranch. Please note that your foal can uh, only grow up when you visit your ranch. By the way, we have also fixed a bug where people would see your horse's coat incorrectly after using a rental. Now they added on to this and said, we would like to add some details regarding today's update. Uh, the introduced changes mean that now there will be much more variation for the potential value. You will now be able to achieve much higher values, up to 100, as well as much lower values, down to 10. The important aspect of the change is that potentials will now depend on the horse's parents. If you already got a horse with high potential value, you will have much higher chances to get a foal with high potential value when you use uh, this horse for breeding. Note that even if a horse has no potential, it still carries the necessary genetic information about potential values. It means that even if the foal's parents had no potential, but the grandparents had high potential, the foal can still inherit high potential value from the grandparents. Now, these are the recent changes that came in in the most recent Alicia Online update. So just bear in mind that going forward, it should be easier to increase the potentials, but there's still going to be a little bit of chance involved, and hopefully we'll be able to do an update to this in the near future. So the other thing I just want to briefly mention, this doesn't really add so much to breeding, but sometimes people forget to use armor. They breed these really awesome horses, great stats, great potential, but then they go into races without any armor. Armor carries bonuses, and the different types of armor give you different bonuses, so go in and look at the armor which is available in the shop under the horses area. There's saddles, protectors, horseshoes, and shields, and mostly you want to use those all in combination. And if you can't afford to use armor yet, then all you need to do is click on bonuses, go to items and you can collect the free Star Knight horse equipment and you can claim it every day. And this armor is completely free. So now I want to talk about total skills. So the total skills possible at birth of any foal in Alicia Online, the maximum possible is 179. Now this is an example of a horse that was born with 179 total stats. Now in terms of what any one skill can have at birth, it is 99. This horse was two points short of this. Now it's only possible to have a horse born with 99 in one skill if all of its other skills only have 20 skills in each of them. Now, after leveling your horse to the max, the highest possible amount of skills you can have is 209. And after leveling any of the skills to max in one particular skill, the most possible is 120 in one skill. So the next thing I wanna talk about is trash skills. Now, when we're talking about trash skills, these are just unwanted skills. Basically skills in places on the horse that you didn't want them on. Now this is a horse here that I wanted to have as a pure control horse and it has no trash skills. And what I mean by this is it's 20 in every skill but control because you don't want it to be 21 or 22 or 23 on say a spirit or whatever because I don't want the skills going anywhere else. I want them to go into control. So this is a really good example of a horse that doesn't have that. Now it depends where you don't want skills. Now, I'm not telling you whether you're right or wrong to have them in certain places, it's still your decision. But if you're going to have a magic horse, you know, you probably want a control horse. Or something that's got control and speed, for example. If you're going for a speed horse, you're going to probably want either a full speed horse or you're going to want a horse that's speed and strength. So therefore anywhere else is a trash skill. But it is t entirely up to you. You do it the way you want to, uh, but it's just something to consider. Try to avoid breeding to horses that have a lot of trash skills. So if you're trying to get a particular horse 
the, with particular skill set, and you breed to a horse that's got a lot of trash skills, therefore skills in a place that you don't want, then the chances are the foal is going to have those trash skills and it's going to be very hard to get rid of those. So when you're picking horses to breed with or to breed from, try and go for horses that are as close to what you want as possible. Now let's talk about some of the limitations in the game. So the maximum grade you can register to breed from is grade 8. So we have a grade 11 here, we have some grade 10s, I don't have any grade 9s at the moment, but if we click on the grade 10s, the button here is grade out, because registered horses must be a maximum of level 8. And the minimum that you can have is a horse of grade 4. If a horse is below grade 4, you can't put it up to breed. So grade 1, 2 and 3 cannot be registered or bred from unless they reach a grade 4 minimum. The other thing is you cannot breed with your own horses unless you're using a second account. If you're trying to breed with horses that are on the same account as the one that you're breeding from, it's not going to work because you just can't breed with your own horses. The horses that you can breed from are grade 4 to grade 11, but as I mentioned, you can't register horses that are above grade 8 or below grade 4. Some things to bear in mind before you start breeding your horses, you should ensure the beauty bar of your horse has both stars activated for breeding chance 1 and breeding chance 2. In case you don't know how to increase the bar, all you need to do is use one of the cleaning items to clean your horse, and this will automatically increase the bar. Something that I mentioned in one of my old videos was the luck. Um, I can confirm that actually this has no effect on whether your horse breeds successfully or not. It used to be a case that it did in the original game where you would have wanted exceptional luck, but this actually has no effect whatsoever anymore. One of the first things you should do before you start breeding is look for the 10k horses. You can actually sort it by the fee price. Uh, once you start paying larger sums of carrots for breeding covers, it can get very expensive very, very quickly. Now, one of the things you should definitely be looking at is the arrows here for the genetics. So basically what these mean is red gives you the best chance that the horse will inherit the uh, genetics of the horse that you're breeding to. Orange means it's still reasonably good, uh, but it's not as good as red. Then green is sort of almost like the middle ground, sort of the average. Then we have purple, which is where it's starting to decrease and then we have blue where it's very unlikely so that's kind of the worst chance um, in terms of genetics you can raise your own arrow by ensuring your horse has both its breeding chances from the beauty bar uh, from cleaning as we mentioned earlier if you're breeding for coat color on alicia online then you want to pay attention to lineage so the lineage indicates how many of a particular color are in a horse's ancestry so here we've got plus one horses now if we are looking for to breed a color we want to look for plus nine so here we've got some horses here and if we click on them then we can see that in their history they have they've all got white gray here and Kirito here has all uh, black horse lineage so if you're breeding for color this is something I would advise try and breed plus nine to plus nine of the same color that's going to give you the best chance of getting the color that you want when breeding on Alicia Online, you do want to use the search feature and you also want to pay attention to the grade because different grades cost different prices um, and you can go down to grade 4 and these are the cheapest horses and then you can go up to grade 8 and this is where mostly the most expensive horses are. Um, so you can switch between grades and the search button here is very useful because it can help you search for particular coat colors, it can help you look for certain Timian types and teal types and you can also see how rare they are with the little stars. And at the bottom here we've got skills. Now it depends what kind of horse you're trying to breed. So if you're trying to look for particular coat colors then you're going to want to search by coat. If you're looking for particular mane and tails you want to include those. And if you just want skills and you don't care about anything else then you just want to select the skills. You don't have to select coat color or mane types or anything like that. Um, so for this particular horse I'm going to look for black horses with a long curly mane or a long uh, mane and I'm going to look for long curly tails and I want to look for speed horses so we're going to click search on that. Now Obviously because you can sort horses by rarity of their coat colour and their mane and tail and you can sort them by first and secondary skills, this makes it easier then when you're looking for particular types of horses and you don't have to use all of those search features, it just depends on what type of horse you're trying to breed. So the next thing is we want to consider not just the price and the lineage but we also want to consider the pregnancy chance. So here um, if we sort by pregnancy chance we can see there's a horse here with uh, six lineage and uh, it is more expensive than 10k but it has a higher pregnancy chance so pregnancy chance um, you 
really want to breed two horses that have more hearts because it increases the chance of actually getting a foal. But I sometimes do breed to horses with like no hearts. I am guilty of that. I just don't advise it because it tends to be kind of expensive. Um, now it's very important that you keep your end goal in mind when you're breeding horses and uh, when you're picking horses to breed to and be extremely picky whenever you've set a goal in mind because you want to breed to the horses that have the desired traits that you want and you also want to be using a horse that has traits that are going to get you there too. So let's um, have a look here. I'm just going to have a quick look at this horse here. Really I want a horse that's 99 in speed. That's ideally what I want from here. So here's a horse 99 in speed. Remember when I was talking about trash skills earlier? This is a horse that's 20, 20, 20, and 20, and 99 in the middle. So this is a horse that I'm going to try breeding with now. It's a really low pregnancy chance. It even tells me it's going to be very low. But I'm going to make that risk right now, and we'll see what we get. So this is what I expected to get a card compensation. So when you have a field breeding, you get a card compensation instead of a foal. Uh, this can include little items, it can also include gems if you get a golden compensation and you pick the right card. When you're breeding horses on Alicia Online, it's very important that you remember to keep your end goal in mind when you're picking horses to breed to. Breed to the horses that have the desired traits, whether that's certain potentials, certain stats, or both of those things. Maybe you're looking at a particular colour. Um, it's going to depend on what you're aiming for. Um, like I have some horses that are purely there as plus nine lineage horses with nice main tails um, Some other ones there are my potential horses with really good stats um, So I'm working with a couple of different lines of horses in that respect and um, you might just want to work with one Whatever you prefer yourself, but um, there's a couple of tips I'm going to give you guys if you're looking for particular colors because there's some horses that can help you out They're not necessarily the best for stat breeding horses necessarily because they do have skills maybe that you you would find undesirable depending on what you're aiming for so if you go into the shop here we've got the horses tab and in here there's shop horses now we're going to go down to the grade 7 ones that you can max to grade 10 so you could buy one of these horses and they have absolutely no lineage and it's useful because you could take one of these horses and breed it to your perfect idea of what you want as a horse possibly that's maybe available um, to breed to at the minute in the public coverings and you might get a foal that has some of the traits that you want. Now you do need to bear in mind um, the stats that the horses have may not be desirable in that respect but if you're breeding maybe a line for colour or going for particular manes and tails it's kind of good because you don't have any history in that horse there's no lineage there there's no horses in its history that are going to affect it and the benefit is that whenever you free the shop horse you actually get your money back as well so it's something that you can do um, if you want to breed for color and things like that it may not be suitable if you're looking to breed for stats a horse you may consider using is the GM horses these horses are available at grade 7 they cost 9,900 carats to breed with they all have plus one lineage and if you click on them you can see that they actually have no breeding history whatsoever there's no lineage to them therefore there's no horses in here that are going to negatively affect what you breed to them um, so they're available in a range of colors uh, they all have a medium short mane and they have a medium tail each one of them is skilled in one particular skill this for example is the white gray jm horse in control therefore it's got 60 control you can also get it in agility speed strength and spirit all of the other stats though were 25 making it maybe not ideal if you're looking at a horse with no unwanted stats so therefore no trash stats it may not be perfect in that respect but if you're just trying to get uh, started off with maybe breeding a certain color it might be worth trying this just some general tips you know make sure that when you're breeding horses you're breeding for a reason that you have an end goal in mind and you're picking horses on the basis that they have the traits that you want and just make sure to stick to that goal don't just breed because you're bored or because somebody pestered you that's the quickest way to lose carrots you know have a minimum amount that you keep that you don't go under as well this is really important and these are just wee small things that'll help you get towards the goals that you want with your horses and um, thank you to Z Red Dragon for helping me make this video. I'm hoping to expand on some of these topics in the future. If you have any further questions, you can leave them below. Now remember, what you decide to read in the leash online is up to you. These are just some of the things that you can use to help you get there. So anyway, scrubs, I'm gonna leave it there. Hope you said a little bit and bye.